Well, hello, Jolene. How are you doing today? Good, good. How are you today, Kelly? I am doing well. So um, who are we talking about today? Oh, oh, you would not believe this person we're talking about today. She is the master of all things tech. She has changed my life and my business and the life of so many others that I can't, I can't even count. Well, she like sounds pretty amazing. Who is this person? I think she is pretty amazing. Um, her name is Kelly and it's you. Oh, what? <laughs> Um, and today we're we're talking all about the Tech Savvy Academy and all about uh, what you do and how you've changed not only my business, but like I'd said previously, the businesses of so many others. Well, I'm excited to talk all about it. So let's just dive right in. Hi there, villagers. I'm Kelly. And I'm Jolene. And this is the Success Through Community Podcast. Where we believe that solopreneur success really does take a village. I see it really as the lifeline. It's been essential in getting my business to where it is today. We are talking with women just like you who know that the secret to their success is their community. Have you found your village yet? Hi, Kelly. Hello, okay. Jolene. Hey. <laughs> so one of my favorite aspects of the podcast is rapid fire. So I'm going to throw some rapid fire questions at you. And uh, just give me your immediate answer. Don't think about it unless you're going to swear, then think about it, but just give me what you got. Okay. You ready? Got it. All right. So first, what is the best thing about having your own business? Not answering to anyone else. Oh, 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 I like that. Hmm. Yes. Uh, What is the hardest thing about having your own business? Not answering to anyone else. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, because... (laughs) Because I'm going to ask you because, because then you don't have anybody telling you where to go next. Yes, absolutely. What to do now? Um, <laughs> what is your business mission statement or your I help statement? Yeah. Okay. So I have like a billion I help statements. I really <laughs> need to work on figuring out which one is the primary. But as mm-hmm. far as a mission statement, um, an unofficial mission statement, it would be um, empowering other female business owners to find confidence in the tech side of their business, to not be intimidated by it, to not be overwhelmed by it, and to help them realize that they absolutely can. Oh, I love that because I need it in my life. Definitely. <laughs> uh, can you describe yourself in five words for me, please? Yeah. Um, integrity. Mm. uh authenticity but those are very similar but different enough that I'm going to use it (laughs) um shy I don't believe it or not I know you don't but but I am it's true um (laughs) okay that's three um compassionate empathetic compassionate kind of that's two words but yeah and um silly a little bit of a goofball. Yeah. You know, I think, I think you're 100% on all of that. And I just want to point out, even when you know that's coming, because we wrote these together, it's not that easy, is it? No. Oh, no, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. And I tried really hard not to like overthink it before. I wanted to let it try to be rapid fire, but that's hard to do when not you've easy. seen them before. But yes. Um, okay. So what is the one location that you're most productive in? Um, I'm in it right now. Your office. My, my office in my home with the caveat of the door is closed. Nice. And what time of the day do you get the most done? Honestly, first thing in the morning. Yeah. Um, there's not as many things to distract me. And uh, other than your own community, what would be your favorite online community? Yeah. That, so this is one of those that like, I knew this question was coming and yet it's really hard because a lot of the communities I'm in are for completely different reasons. Yes. Um, so I, I'm going to say there's a local, uh, business like female entrepreneur kind of, um, group that I'm in on Facebook that's called the Boise business babes. And while I will caveat with, and you know, this about me already, I am not a fan of boss, babe, business, babe, but I, 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 girl boss, I'm not a fan of those yeah. terms. 
Um, so we, we will forgive them of that. But that community, I think, would is the one I visit the most besides my own. So I guess that means that it's my favorite because I, guess so. I get a lot yeah. out of it. Yeah. Why? What do you get out of it? Um, because it's local, honestly, I get friends who are like-minded and that I can actually go out with in person and sit and have coffee with, you know, like as much as I am a huge proponent of online everything because reasons, many reasons, Mm -hmm. there's just something different about sitting and having a cup of coffee with somebody and talking about your business. It's just very, I just did it this morning, actually. It's just very different. And that group is full of women who are all doing that, you know, like actually connecting in person and, and, you know, doing business life together. That's, I love that. Uh, the whole connecting in person thing is huge. I think yeah. that's amazing. Uh, this coming from someone whose one word was shy. Again, we're going to have to discuss that off camera. I know, I know, I know. I don't think that's a word for you. No, you it, think is. it is, but it, is. it isn't. <laughs> Uh, that's just my opinion. We'll talk about that later. Uh, let's get down to business here. What we're here for is to talk about you and your company. So what sparked you to start your own business? My own business or this own business? Cause those are two answers, different answers for me. Your own business, not this one, but for, okay. um, Kelly Gable. Yeah. Well, okay. So, so Kelly Gable kind of like, Jolene Mills is multifaceted. So it, it kind of started, I'm not going to date myself a long time ago when I started vocal coaching and teaching people how to sing and how to audition and things like that. And that came about incredibly organically, um, just by being a performer and people asking me for guidance and me not understanding why they were asking me for guidance. And so then I started kind of realizing, hey, I think that's a thing. I think I should do that on purpose and be intentional about it. So that was what sparked that. Um, But as far as like the tech savvy business coaching side of Kelly L. Gable, which is primarily what we're here to talk about and what my passion is right now, that I'm going to have to give credit to the husband. Um, As much as I... I hate to do that. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, I, I'm going to give him credit because I started a couple of years ago realizing that I wanted to coach and mentor other business owners after having started my own successful business as an audition and singing coach. Um, not that different from you doing that in your own businesses. Um, but I couldn't quite figure out what set me apart. Mm. from the many, many business coaches that are out there. And I had tried a few things and it just like, wasn't, not only was it not catching, but it just wasn't feeling great. I was just kind of like, I don't really know where I'm going with this. I don't, I don't get it. I I don't know if I would hire me because I don't really know what I'm doing here, you know? And I was kind of venting as you do with the husband about that while we were walking the dog. And he was like, why don't you like, teach people all the tech stuff that you're so good at. Like there are so many business owners who don't know how to do any of that. Why aren't you teaching them that? Yeah. And it was this like giant light bulb moment of duh, why (laughs) am I not doing that? And that's, that was the spark for the tech savvy Academy and all that came after it. That is a great spark. Wow. Kudos to the husband. I know, right? That's, it's going out there. The world is going to know. I know. I've credit, said it so before on other great. podcasts, so I have to keep giving him the credit where it, yeah, where it that, belongs. <laughs> um, so my next question, actually, you've already answered it, was to ask if you've always wanted to be in the technical slash kind of training industry, but it seems like it wasn't the path that you thought you'd be on right now. Can you give me a little bit more about that? Yeah. I mean, it certainly wasn't something I thought was going to be my business. It's, it's right. been a natural outcropping in my career, in the, the places that I have worked in the corporate world, where I just naturally become the person that people always ask the questions. Okay. Kind of like how I started teaching singing, right? Is that people would just start asking me like, hey, can you help me figure out why this isn't working? And it's like, yes, I can. But it was never something where I thought, 
that was what I wanted to do. Um, but, but as far as like coaching in some capacity, yeah, I think that was there for a long, long time that I wanted to be able to help people build their confidence in something. I just didn't know it was going to be this something. Nice. Nice. So with that being said, you, you found your company and you're calling very organically. Mm -hmm. So what one piece of advice would you give to women out there that are just starting their own online business today? Uh, This is something that I say a lot and I I don't think I'm ever going to stop saying it. You are not one size fits all. Oh, I like that. Yep. 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 There, there is, there there should and will always be uniqueness about you in every possible aspect of your business. And therefore you should never do. And I just said the word that I don't say you should never do what (laughs) someone tells you, you should do (laughs) (laughs) right? (laughs) that should, should is, is just a bad word. It's a dirty word because it, it leads us down a path that, often does not end up where we want to be. Right. And so I think recognizing that there, you are not one size fits all. So nobody's answer, nobody's success formula is going to be the one that works for you. It's just, that's just not reality. Absolutely. And there's a lot out there where everybody is follow my path, do what I say. And it, could have worked for them, but it might not work for anybody else. That's very good. I like that a lot. There is a myth that there is a one size fits all gene out there. And I think that is 100% a myth. And I think your, your method of having that kind of mentality is, is so important. I really, really like that. So speaking of the one size fit all gene that we are all hunting for, uh, what is a common myth about being a tech coach about the technical aspects of running uh, an online business? Um, I think the common myth is that because I'm a tech coach, it means I can fix your equipment. Oh, (laughs) I cannot. You can't? I cannot. (laughs) I do not know how to take apart a computer. I do not know how to fix physical things wrong with your computer. That, That word technology has a lot of meanings. Yes. And I think that the most common one that people think of is the physical technology. So you're not tech support. Correct. (laughs) Correct. And that is definitely the biggest myth. And I can't even tell you how many people have reached out for things like that. (laughs) I have to tell them, I'm so sorry. I am not the type of tech that you're looking for. (laughs) Oh, bummer. Um, What is, would you say is the most important lesson then that you've learned on your journey other than um, you don't know how to pull apart a computer that's something we're going to have to work on, but yeah, yeah. what is, what, what would be the biggest lesson that you think you've learned since you started as a solopreneur in the tech savvy world? Oh, you qualified with the tech savvy world. And that, right. that does, I mean, it sort of changes the answer, but I don't think really, um, it kind of comes back to what I was saying a minute ago about the one size fits all, right. Is that, you know, as, as a coach, as somebody that's helping people learn tech and and helping them with that sort of thing, I am doing them a disservice if I tell them this is this is how to do it, follow this exact formula, and it will work for you. I have tried that myself many times over, and I know that it doesn't work now. I have learned, and it's not just in the tech world, although that is a big part of it. But in in any aspect, following anybody else's formula for success has never been successful for me. Right. Um, So, so yeah, I think, and in the tech world, I think it's the same because, you know, something that, that I do often is have kind of conversations with women to help them evaluate what's called their tech stack, you know, the, the tools that they use and helping them understand and figure out which ones are the right ones for them, you know, and And learning that just because somebody says, hey, I use this, you should use it, like doesn't mean that you actually should, you know, and I, I've learned that myself the the hard way as well. So um, yeah, I think that 
it, it all kind of intersects and it, it goes together, but, um, but yeah, that there's not just one option. I think that you're definitely spot on. And I agree with you on that with, you know, you could speak to multi-billionaires out there and the most successful people in the world. And you would ask them what was their secret to success or how they did it. And no one's ever going to say, I followed this formula. I did this, I did this, I did this. So those, those formulas of do what I tell you and you will be bringing in, you know, tons and tons of money. They just don't work. And I agree with you on that one. It's, it's finding your own path and you're not one size fits all. That's not going to be your new slogan. I love it. I got it on a shirt. Who are you talking about? Yeah, you do. I, I see the shirt. <laughs> I'm waiting for my version of the shirt. Uh, with that being said, uh, you're talking about making sure that everybody knows that you're not going to fit. We all don't fit into the same mold. Right. But what is an important personality trait or an important strength that you feel someone would need to have to kind of work in your industry? Oh gosh. Um, always be learning Mm. openness to always learn and to never, never feel like, you know, everything. Oh, absolutely. Um, that's true in business. That's true as a solopreneur, but it's especially true in tech because even if you are a master of something, I guarantee you tomorrow they'll change it. Tech is always changing. So, Yeah. So more so than any other industry, but I think it applies across the board that you always have to be open to learning and, and open to learning from multiple sources. Cause you just never know where that wisdom is going to come from or where that um, explanation is going to spark understanding. Right. Yeah. So how, how with that, that's such a great answer and I love it. And I'm going to put you on the spot here with asking, how are you always learning? What are you doing to continuously stay up to date and learning with what's going on in in your world, in your industry? Yeah, um, I think the first thing would be, uh, gosh, I hate to say this because it's also one of my least favorite things, but (laughs) I'm on so many email lists. Oh, right. So many email lists. I always want to know when a new tool is coming on, um, when a new feature is coming out. things like that. And then when I see something that seems interesting, I, I go to the YouTubes and I go and I see the people who've been part of kind of beta testing it or whatever. And I watch their videos to learn, you know, what did they like about it? What did they not like about it? You know, I know enough about myself when it comes to tech at this point to know what my priorities are. That's Mm -hmm. something that comes with time and comes with working with a lot of different systems, but when I get a chance to see somebody using something that's new or that's coming out or whatever, I can start to know before I even bother going down that rabbit hole myself, if this is something that's actually going to be something I like. Right. So those two kind of things combined. And then I also, honestly, I have a huge blessing and this is usually such a detriment for most people, but my corporate job that I choose to keep doing while I grow my business is a huge place where I learn about this kind of stuff because I work in a similar capacity in that job. So I'm constantly taking things that I learn in that environment and being able to apply it to my own business and to like to my own tech side of things, but also to how I'm uh, advising and guiding the people that I'm working with. So that, that is a natural way that I'm just constantly learning. That is absolutely brilliant. I love that. Not many solopreneurs out there are willing to admit even. They're afraid to say that they have a day job. And the fact that you are out there, you know, um, working both worlds and using it to your advantage, I want to say that you're always learning, always growing. And I think that's one of the most important things about uh, having a business is always learning. I don't know if you have these commercials out in the U.S. or anywhere else in the world, but there is a, a commercial series here in Canada. It's for milk and it is always learn, learn all ways. And it's so weird that a milk commercial always stuck with me because I think that is such a brilliant answer. And it just goes to speak to, 
you and your business, because if you are not constantly learning, you are not going to be able to help your clients with what they're doing. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's kind of fantastic. So with that being said, I want to ask you, where can we find you online? Uh, well, my website, which will, I'm going to assume be in the show notes, but is basically just my name, kellylgable.com. And that points you to, um, you know, all the multifacets of what I do uh, in my business. Yeah. Definitely going to be in the show notes. And I believe we can find you somewhere else on social media. That's correct. Um, okay. you, you can find me some pla- like places like the Instagram, but honestly, not very often because I'm not a huge fan. <laughs> Don't come at me for that, but I'm just not a fan. Um, no, but you can absolutely find me daily in the village on Facebook, um, which is the uh, It Takes a Village Solopreneur Success Through Community Facebook group that we co-run. Yeah, it's a great community, I think. It is quite yeah, good, yes. Kind of good. If, if we do say so ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, okay, so we are, with the podcast, we are going to be asking everybody the same question. Okay. And you um, help come up with this question. So I'm going to ask you, mm-hmm. when you're looking back on your business as a solopreneur, even going back to when, and I know you still do vocal coaching. Mm-hmm. So in the entire aspect of everything you've done, with your online world and your online business, how has community supported you and helped you with your success and get you where you are now? Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny that you bring up the aspect of my vocal coaching business because in that business, I don't feel, I never have felt like I've had that community and support there. Uh I've always felt incredibly alone and just not knowing which what that actually shocks me quite a bit yeah Yeah. I mean there's there's plenty of people in that industry but there's I don't know and this is probably me projecting more than reality but I feel like there's a lot of competition culture oh that kind of environment and maybe that comes from just the natural outcropping of competition in performing and because I'm I'm an active performer as well like that's the world that is in and so while you are happy for someone if they get a part if they get a part it means you didn't get the part so there it's hard to to really have that kind of air of support in that way and and I think that trickled into the vocal coaching business as well you know um also the fact that I started that business so long ago when there just wasn't that it wasn't very common you know it wasn't right. it, it is now it's become a much more common thing yes. but at the time it was still pretty new and so there there weren't really peers yeah in that um and i think that that is a part of why when i started going into the business coaching world even before i knew what how i was going to be in that world um community was so important. Like I craved it and I sought it out. And when I didn't really find it the way I wanted it, I created it because I thought, you know what, that was really lonely and not fun building a business that way and doing that completely by myself and not having a mentor to come alongside me and guide me in that. And like, it sucked. I did not like it. And I don't want to keep doing that. And I, I want to be a source of that for people who are feeling that way right now in whatever their business is, you know? And so, um, that being said, now that I have that experience and have that comparison, it's like night and day because I have so much more fun in my business now. Um, I don't feel alone in it. And while I do have a, a supportive husband community aspect where, I mean, he supports, all of my cuckoo crazy ideas when I'm in my business world, but he try as he does and try as he might, he can't really grasp some of the challenges and or wins in my business. Mm -hmm. When I am able to figure out how to fix something tech wise, that was just, I knew I could do it, but I, it just wasn't working. And like, he'll be like, Oh, that's cool, babe. 
I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. This is amazing. This is huge. Whereas I know I can reach out to someone like you and be like, dude, I figured it out. And you get it. Yes. And I think that's so important. Celebrating alone is just so sad. It's it's, so sad. It's just such a, you know, it takes the the wind out of your sails because there's nobody to really understand and get it. And like, you know, celebrate that with you. And I think that that comes in the form of, of wins as far as like, Hey, I signed a client or, you know, I had a discovery call and I didn't flub all over my words the whole time. Like whatever it might be having those people around you who have been there, done that and understand that. Yeah. That sounds like a tiny thing, but that's a really big deal. And I think that that's, that is a huge way, but, but secondary to that, um, having people that I trust that I can go to for feedback with, with things and ideas that I have and having that, that trusting relationship where I know that if I tell you about this idea of mine, you're not going to steal it. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that it's a, a sad, thing. sad thing to say, but it, it's a, it's a reality that we have to be careful of, you know, yeah. um, that it's very easy to, share too much and then su- suddenly you see your own words in somebody else's thing or whatever you know and it's yeah. like yeah there's gonna be a lot of crossover between people especially in the same industries that's that's a given but you know knowing that I have this community that I can get that honest yet co- you know um construction constructive feedback on right and that I can trust them with that you know for lack of a better term that intellectual property but I can tell you that and know that you're going to protect that for me and with me. I, I agree. And I don't think it like, how do I say this? I think trust is one of the biggest aspects that builds a strong community. And it isn't just about the intellectual property. It's the trust that they're there for you more than they're in it for themselves. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and that's the point to a community. That's the point to the village. It's that we're there for each other. We support each other as opposed to, I mean, it for me. And I think, I think that that trust factor is absolutely huge. And you'll only find that in, in a good, solid and strong community because yeah. uh, in, in every industry, it does not matter what industry you're in. There's always going to be those, who are in it for themselves, right? So, sure. yeah. Well, and we're all running a business. So in some yeah. fashion, we have to be a little bit for ourselves, yeah. right? But, but, it's, but a balance. Exactly, you know? exactly. And, and also the, the trust to be able to show up authentically and be vulnerable. I mean, yeah. one of the things that that I love most in the mastermind, and, and I know, you know, it's, it's a, it, I don't love it because obviously it's not a happy thing, but I love that it's part of it is the people, the, the nights that we have when somebody comes and they're just like, guys, I'm really struggling Yeah, with whatever aspect, but I'm just, I'm really struggling. Like I want to hang it up right now. I want to be done with this because this is just not working for me. Yeah. And the ability and the trust there to, to be able to have that conversation, honestly, and, and be that support system for that person to let them know like, Hey, you're not alone in this. How can we support you? How can, you know, if you want to continue, how can we help you? And knowing that that would be there for me if I needed it. So, um, yeah, I think that, yeah, it's a big aspect of it. I think you also made a great point about the vulnerability there is if you're not vulnerable, you're not going to grow and being able to go into these sessions that we have every, every week is, and as much as you don't want anyone to be vulnerable or in a bad place or struggling, the fact that they are, you know, um, able to, yeah. The fact that they're able to just come out and be open and be authentic and vulnerable and that they have that community of support is, is huge because that's, what's going to keep them from just giving up, throwing in the towel and walking away. So that is a huge aspect of community. And I really, really love that you pointed all of that out. So thank you very, very much. Yes, yes. And of course, we will have all your information in the show notes. Why wouldn't we be there? And I might even, you know, throw in a milk commercial just because I can. (laughs) That's what happens when you run that part of something and have access to editing. So (laughs) that's what you do. (laughs) Add milk commercials. But thank you so much, Kelly. I appreciate you taking the time to sit down and answer all of these questions with me and and uh, be vulnerable and be you. It's it's kind of great. 
Thanks. Awesome. Thank Yay. you. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us this week on the Success Through Community podcast. Where our goal is to support female solopreneurs through community. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, make sure you check out the show notes for links, transcripts, and so much more. And be sure to subscribe and leave us a review wherever you're listening to the podcast. Ooh, and don't forget to mention us to your community. And if you can't wait for the next episode, be sure to join us on Patreon where our community is made possible by listeners like you. So thank you so much for your support. Until next time.